everyone, I am Dr. Lauren Brindisi with Carolina Functional Neurology Center and today's question is what are the common types of dysautonomia? Now for anybody that's new to following us, we just want to explain dysautonomia is an umbrella term that means that you're not regulating your autonomic nervous system properly. And I would say dysautonomias are a wide spectrum of changes that people get from things like orthostatic intolerance, exercise intolerance are probably on the more high functioning subclinical level and there's a whole bunch of reasons somebody could develop that. Then we have patients who develop what is the most common type of dysautonomia which is POTS or postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome. And then there are other conditions that look similar to POTS in terms of the symptoms and maybe the changes that people experience when they're changing position or when they're moving around like the dizziness and the presyncope. So the other ones that fall into the dysautonomia category that we see commonly are inappropriate sinus tachycardia, we see orthostatic hypotension, and then none of those require that you actually have a syncable or passing out episode. However, some people that do have those conditions do pass out. And the differential there is going to be what's actually happening with your heart rate and your blood pressure when you change position or when you get onto a tilt table. That's how we differentiate which one of these categories do you actually fall in. And we can do the same thing for the different types of syncope that people may experience. The most common type of syncope that we see is going to be vasovagal syncope. But there are several other types of syncope that do exist. However, we understand that patients with dysautonomias are generally experiencing some kind of dysfunction in their autonomic nervous system. And your autonomic nervous system is actually a peripheral system controlled by higher mechanisms in your central nervous system, predominantly in your brain. That is why working with somebody who's familiar with the intricacies of your nervous system, like a functional neurologist, can be really helpful in terms of the rehabilitation of what's going on in the nervous system. Any other questions? Please let us know. You guys are driving the questions that we're answering and the topics that we're talking about. Um, please comment below, like, share. We appreciate it.